Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of finite element analysis. In this session, I am starting with shape function. I have already told you this term of shape function or interpolation function in the previous two to three sessions. But in this session, we are going to discuss a little more in depth about shape function and how it is going to give you various values for different types of elements or number of nodes that you have. Now here you can see I have taken a rectangular bar. It is fixed at one end. On the other end, there is a load P. This is a small portion of the bar which I am going to study. This is a small portion which I have drawn below. Now since there are two points A and B that I am considering which are the two nodes 1 and 2 as you can see. So I have drawn a straight line. Now this is called as a linear element. U1 and U2 are indicating the displacement at these two nodes. Now you can understand that if there is a load here then more displacement will be at this end as compared to this end. That's why I have shown U2 as higher value as compared to u1. Now at this position let me mark the local coordinate x as 0 and here the total length is he so this will be x bar is equal to he. Now for the displacement let me assume an equation u is equal to ax bar plus b. This is my equation in which I have to find the value of a and b. For that I am going to substitute values. Now at node 1 my u is equal to u1 and my x bar you can see is equal to 0. So when I substitute here therefore u1 is equal to this term will be 0 what remains is only b. Therefore b is equal to u1. I have found one value of constant. So next I am going to write down at node 2 u is equal to u2 and x bar is equal to he. So when I substitute here therefore u2 is equal to a into he plus b. Now b is u1 so I will write down a he plus u1 is u2. Therefore if I want to find a it will be u2 minus u1 upon he. Now if you understand I am using x coordinate which means I am using the rectangular coordinate system which is also called as Cartesian coordinate system. Now I am going to substitute a and b in this equation 1. Therefore I get u is equal to a is u2 minus u1 upon he into x bar plus b is u1. Now here if I take u1 as a common term from the first one I get minus x bar upon he from here I get plus 1 and if I take u2 then there is only one term associated x bar upon he. Now like we have done in the previous derivations, I am doing the same thing associating this two as phi 1 and phi 2. So therefore this is my u. This u can also be written as summation of i is equal to 1 to 2 u i phi i. Here my phi 1 is equal to 1 minus x bar upon he and phi 2 is equal to x bar upon he. So this is what I wanted to figure out. Now these are the values of shape function for this element which is of linear type. Linear means there are only two nodes. Nodes are going to be indicated by alphabet n in my lecture series. So if I say n is equal to 2 I mean linear and this is these are the two shape functions which I have obtained in the form of rectangular coordinate system or Cartesian coordinate system. Now next I will show you an alternative method for deriving the shape function of nth order element. Nth order element means it is actually how many number of elements you have but it is always defined by number of nodes because one element is between two nodes. So here if you observe I have written n is 2 for linear element. This is only one element. This is one. So these are the two nodes. Your x bar is 0, x bar is he. Now I will show you another way of finding the same shape function. So let me write down let phi is equal to. Now here I am not writing displacement. Here I am directly writing about shape function. So we are going to only find a shape function. Uh, we already know the equation of u that is u1 phi1 plus u2 phi2. 
So in case I have to find the displacement, I'll just substitute it in the equation of displacement and calculate the value. So I mainly need to know how to calculate the shape function. So I am assuming phi as a. A is a constant that is supposed to be taken always. Next, from each node, take up the value whichever you see on the left hand side and the right hand side at that time should be 0. Now if you look here, x bar is 0 which means the term on the left hand side is only x bar which is contributed by the first node. When I talk about the second node, its contribution will be x bar minus he because if I want 0 over here, this has to be x bar minus he is equal to 0. I should always have a 0 on the right hand side. Whatever you see on the right hand side, just shift it to the left and see to it that there is a 0 on the right hand side. So second node has to contribute x bar minus he as a term. Now this is my first equation. Next what I am supposed to do is, I am supposed to calculate the value of a and also I have to calculate phi1 and phi2 at the two nodes. So I will start with at node 1. Now if you understand node 1 has contributed this term. So if at all I substitute x bar is 0, this entire equation will become 0. So I cannot have this term when I am calculating phi1 because this term itself will make the entire equation 0. So whatever term that node contributes and if you are calculating the shape function of that particular node, say first one, ignore x bar. So here I will write down x bar term vanishes, just vanish the term. Okay, And I will just write down phi will be equal to phi1. So therefore this phi1 will be a into x bar minus he. So for the first one I should vanish the term which it has contributed. Now I want to calculate the value of a. For that I can substitute x bar as 0. So this side gets sorted. But when I talk about the left hand side phi1 this has to have some value. Now you have to remember this that at node 1 I can say phi1 is 1 and phi2 when I am standing at 1 is 0. Similarly when I am standing at the node 2 here my phi1 is 0 and my phi2 is equal to 1. Like I told you in the previous session the summation of shape function will always be equal to 1 when you are standing at a particular node. So when I am standing at a node summation is 1, summation is 1. But when I am standing at 1 my phi1 will hold importance as 1, phi2 will be 0 and this is about node 2. So here I will write down at node 1 phi1 is equal to 1 and x bar you can write down x bar is equal to 0. So let's substitute here therefore 1 is equal to a into minus he therefore a will have minus 1 upon he as the value. When I substitute this here I get therefore phi1 is equal to minus 1 upon he into x bar minus he. From here I am writing. Okay, I am substituting this over here. So therefore I get phi1 is equal to, let's push this inside, this term becomes plus and this becomes minus. This is the same equation which I just obtained by using the previous method. Now I will talk about node 2. Now when you look here at node 2, I am going to follow the same process. Okay, So here at node 2, which term should vanish? x bar minus he because this is the contribution of node 2. So here I will follow the same steps and I will write down at node 2 x bar minus he term vanishes and phi is equal to phi 2. Therefore I will write down phi 2 is equal to a into x bar. Then I will write down at node 2 phi 2 is equal to 1 and x bar is equal to he. So when I substitute here therefore 1 is equal to a into he therefore a is equal to 1 upon he. Now I will substitute this over here so I directly get phi 2 is equal to x bar upon he. Now if you look at these two terms this is the same which I have obtained in the previous derivation. You can see here. It is the same term that I obtained by using both the methods. So this is the rectangular coordinate system or Cartesian coordinate system of solving. Now I will go for another derivation. So next I will take a quadratic element where n is equal to 3 which means there are 3 nodes. 
So I'll start with let phi is equal to a. First node will contribute x bar. Second node will contribute x bar minus he by 2. And third node will contribute x bar minus he. Now here I'll write down this equation 1. At node 1, phi is equal to phi 1. And my x bar term vanishes. This should vanish so that my equation doesn't become 0. Therefore, I'll write down phi 1 is equal to a into x bar minus he by 2. And I have x bar minus he. Then I'll write down at node 1, phi 1 is equal to 1 and x bar is equal to 0. When I substitute, therefore, 1 is equal to a into minus he by 2 and here I get minus he. Therefore, a is equal to 2 upon he square. When I substitute this in this equation, I get therefore phi 1 is equal to 2 upon he square x bar minus he by 2 and x bar minus he. Now from here I will take a negative sign outside. So this becomes he by 2 minus x bar and from here also if I take a negative sign outside I get he minus x bar. Now when both have given out a negative sign obviously they become positive together. Now I am going to multiply this term with 2 upon he so that this becomes 1. So this will become 1 minus and this is multiplied 2 x bar upon he and remaining will be 1 upon he. So that I will multiply here so I get 1 minus x bar upon he. This is my phi 1. Next, I will talk about node 2. At node 2, phi will be my phi 2 and x bar minus he by 2. This term vanishes. Therefore, I will have phi 2 is equal to a into x bar and x bar minus he. Again, I will write down at node 2. Phi 2 is equal to 1 and x bar is equal to he by 2. So when I substitute here therefore 1 is equal to a into he by 2 and here I have he by 2 minus he. This becomes a into he by 2 minus he by 2. This is 1 therefore a is equal to minus 4 upon he square. This is my value of a. When I substitute this in this equation, I get therefore phi 2 is equal to minus 4 upon he square x bar into x bar minus he. Now here what I will do is, I will just take one he term inside and also the negative sign. So this becomes 4 upon he and one x bar remains and I get 1 minus x bar upon he. So this is my phi 2 term. Next, I'll talk about node 3. At node 3, x bar minus he, this term should vanish. So, I'll get phi is equal to phi 3 and x bar minus he term vanishes. Therefore, phi 3 is a into x bar and x bar minus he by 2. Then, I'll write down at node 3, phi 3 is equal to 1 and x bar is equal to he. Therefore, 1 is equal to a into he into he minus he by 2. Now, here I get a as this will be he by 2. So, here I have 2 upon he square. When I substitute this here, I get therefore phi 3 is equal to 2 upon he square x bar and x bar minus he by 2. Here I will just take a negative sign outside. So I get minus x bar upon he and this shifting inside. So I get 1 minus 2 x bar upon he. This is my phi 3. So this is how we are supposed to calculate the shape function for linear and quadratic element. If you want you can calculate for cubic element as well which is the next one.
cubic means n is equal to 4 which means there will be 4 nodes so you will be dividing the entire element into 4 parts so with this i end the session i hope you have understood the derivation if you have any doubts please write to me in the comment section see you in the next session thank you